a detailed guide on Ark of Osiris. That's our target for the day. And it's my favorite event. It gives 10 legendary commander sculptures just for playing one hour. You also get to choose which one hour. Unlike KVK where fighting starts whenever it starts, this is where you get to pick the specific time. And it's lots of fun. It doesn't cost you anything because you don't technically need to use any resources or any speed ups if you don't want to. It's 30 versus 30. So it's much easier to coordinate. So let's try to create a complete guide for Ark of Osiris. So it's Friday morning reset. That means we can register for Ark of Osiris. Any titled R4 officers can register you for ARC. Now, if you click on registration, you have to choose the time first, various times over Saturday and Sunday. You have to select six skills that you want to use in ARC. You can click on the info button. It tells you what the skill does. And then you have to select at least 10 members up to 30. Now, you can take 10 backups as well, which we do not recommend as it impacts your matchmaking waiting. Now, when registering, you may get two choices. One of them is gold and one of them is silver. So if your alliance is within the top 20, then you get the gold. Otherwise, you get the silver league. Uh, the difference is five gold heads for each. So how often can you play Ark of Osiris? Well, it's your alliance's choice. If you want it every fortnight, Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. So every two weeks, you have a chance to win 10 gold heads if you win the match. Or if you lose the match, you have a chance to get five gold heads. Mm -hmm. And we'll see you in the Ark match. We are playing an arc match in the background at 4x speed. This is where we're playing with Rockstar? Yep, because that way it's a lot easier for me to show you certain things rather than me having to focus on a lot of things myself. Just showing you the skills again, the skills that are being used in this match, and you can again have a read. Now we are looking at the history of this alliance where we are playing now and the rules and rewards. Now see how there was an enter button? If you press enter, you teleport on the map. But you need to have all your troops home and your hospital clear so that you can enter Ark of Osiris. Mm -hmm. Let's have a look at the map and the buildings on the map. So as you can see, there are quite a few white buildings on the map and they're evenly spread on both sides. And you need to capture and hold those buildings. That's how you get team or alliance points. And there is something called Ark of Osiris itself. So in the middle where is that golden little box, that's where an item will spawn and whoever gets to capture that item and bring it back to your own building or your own area, then you get a boost in points as well. You can get individual points from three ways. That is garrisoning, fighting and gathering from caravan. Team points is very similar as well. The longer you hold buildings and the more resources you gather from caravans and the more times that you get Ark of Osiris. Now on the left bottom screen, you will see that there are some skills. So those are the skills that we selected first and they can be applied in the match. Now, before a match starts, it's a good idea to have a strategy in terms of who is doing what. So the most important thing at first is knowing who are the people that are playing on the top team or going to the right hand side in this case and who are the players that are going to be going to the left hand side or the bottom in this case. Your plan mail should also say which person is doing the rally and which person is joining the rallies. Mm -hmm. Now also important the teleport. So when we captured the obelisks um, there's a certain time you have to hold it for and then the building becomes yours. That's when you get points and you get to teleport. Now, as you can see, we get to teleport. Now, at the start, you only get eight teleports. If you get eight teleports each obelisk, then that's 16 people out of the 30. So you need a teleport order as well in terms of who can teleport at first and then who can teleport a little bit later. 20 minutes later, you get more teleport spots. Now, you can see that we, we not only rallied our obelisk we did rally the enemy obelisk as well capturing your obelisk is very important because otherwise you don't get any teleports and if you don't have teleports you are not close to the battle you have to walk a long way which is not a good idea now we have been designated to be the garrison leader for one of the buildings which we 
are using Zenobia to garrison, which is that building over there. I can, I think you can see my Zenobia, and you probably saw my Saladin and the Minamoto going towards the enemy buildings and trying to capture them as well. Now, the reason why we you want to do it at start is because every building gives a first occupation bonus. So if you do get the buildings and you get to convert them into your color you get an extra boost and then you get per minute points from each of the buildings that you hold so two type of points initial capture and per minute points for holding the building in your name and the enemy will try to rally it throughout and you should do the same if enemy uh, on the enemy buildings so that you can change color so we are playing as red we want the map to look all red now the other thing that's happening at the side at the moment is in the middle generally there's a marker with 15 minutes uh, with five minutes before the arc is spawned which you can check on the top left corner and then you need to make sure that every march that's not within a building comes out in the middle to fight and to capture the arc of osiris so the Ark of Osiris, as in the object that drops, if you capture it and bring it to your own buildings, you get a boost of points. Now, middle fight, you need to have lots of lots of marches so that you can make sure you get the Ark of Osiris. Now, normally, how many marches do you send, M? I usually send one because I garrison things. Mm -hmm. I normally don't garrison too many buildings, maybe two, so I try to send three marches. So your plan mail, again, should kind of explain how many marches who is meant to take in the middle and how long before now one of the things i'm trying to do here is i'm asking whether my zenobia can be garrison leader again uh, garrison captain again for that building so the reason why i had to ask for that is because after the rally you're meant to take your march back so that you can refresh and bring out fresh troops and in this case i was not r4 Ideally speaking, we recommend putting the garrison leaders as R4 so that they don't have to ask in Alliance chat. Now, what you also saw in the background is the Ark of Osiris being deposited into one of our outposts. So basically, you take it to a, a building that you own or your even the cities or the city looking things and then you still get the points. Now, I'm trying to follow markers, and as you can see, all my five marches are fighting everywhere. So, I got two marches in garrison, I think, or three, and I have one march in the middle. And then this is a fast-paced game, and the forex speed is not helping us, uh, I think, explaining what's happening in the background. But more so than describing what's happening in the background, I think it's important to understand how should you strategize to win? So in terms of a strategy, the best one or the, I guess, a best starter strategy would be making sure that you focus on garrisoning your own buildings. You should have at least five players designated for each of the buildings on your side. That's four buildings. You can consider keeping a, a few marches for your obelisk as well so that the enemy can't take it. And because if the enemy does take it, then they can teleport in your area and it kind of does get a bit messy. Now, the strategies, by the way, I'm talking about, they're not for the highest level of playing. At the same time, if you're new to Ark of Osiris, that's very good for you. And also, if you do not have a consistent win streak, so the alliance that I'm playing for has a seven win streak at the moment. Um, unless you have something going on like that, the strategies that we are talking about would be good for you. Now, consistently throughout the match, what I'm trying to do is trying to make sure that I at least have one or two matches in the middle for every time Ark spawns. And throughout a match, Ark can spawn about three or four times, depending on how, how long a fight is in the middle. Now, the skills that titled R4 officers and the R5 can use the skills. Generally speaking, most of the skills are being used in the middle fight because capturing that arc is very important, gives a lot of points. So other than going to the middle and joining garrisons, you should also join rallies. And you can do that by clicking the little flag icon on the left hand side. So in this match, I haven't been joining as many rallies and that's because that wasn't part of my responsibility. I was asked to join the garrisons and join the middle fights. Now, one of the other things that I'm trying to do at this stage is you can see that I'm trying to capture some of the buildings that are called outposts. So I'm actually checking my score to see whether I'm actually meeting the targets. 
So you will see that I send my Saladin and my Minamoto to go to the enemy side outposts and to capture them. I'm also keeping an eye out for gatherers. So as we mentioned earlier, there are things called caravans and people could be gaining points from those gathering from those caravans. People usually use farming marches. So I'm using my Minamoto to kill them as well. So killing the farmers so that they can't gather more points from farming. So farming actually gives you team points and individual points. I and didn't I know that. Oh yeah, it does. Now I'm actually making sure that I am the garrison leader again. So as you can see that if I was an R4 or by that, I mean, if every garrison leader was an R4, there should be four of them. That way they can easily change the garrison captains rather than having to ask. Also helps if you're on Discord. Now, because I was trying to do the recording and this is like three o'clock in my time, that's why I didn't actually join Discord. If I was on Discord, then that would have saved me typing. Now I'm still running around with the Minamoto and trying to get um, the farm kills to make sure they don't get points from that. Now, now that we have kind of gone through some of the gameplay, a few other important things or a um, few things that we can kind of summarize. So what is Ark of Osiris? Ark of Osiris is a map or a game mode where 30 people from each alliance can fight and you can have up to 40, but then only 30 can join that the other 10 are more backups in case if one of the main 30 isn't present. But generally speaking, you're better off picking a team of specific 30 that will by ready check or something can confirm that they're gonna be there because that way you're not impacting your matchmaking. The players that you take in your backup actually impacts your matchmaking. So we try not to take any backups. The second most important thing we mentioned is garrisoning and holding on to buildings because they give you team points and individual points. Yep. And then the next bit that we talked about was having a plan, knowing who is going on which side, who is teleporting in which order, who is sending how many marches in the middle. And then we also talked about... The next thing we talked about is going on Discord because then we can coordinate on Discord rather than typing. Yeah, the voice, is a, voice makes it a lot more easier. See what happens if you follow the plan. Look at the top right mini map. Almost every building looks red. Yep, it does. Now, we have been quite lucky with everyone kind of following plan. And I think generally we may have been a little stronger than the opponent. Now, one of the things that I'm doing um, with my salad in there was I'm standing next to a building and I'm waiting for the rally to come in. Now, that brings us to a new, more important point. But before we discuss that, I'm just showing how we took an enemy obelisk and they're trying to swarm it down. But before they swarm it down, if we do manage to capture it, then you can teleport to the enemy side as well and cause a lot of chaos on that side. And also showing how I'm holding some of the buildings on the enemy side just by myself, which are the little outposts. Now, outposts gives a lot less points than the bigger buildings, but at the same time, it does give some points. Now, if you want to find out how many points which building gives, if you just click on each of the buildings, it'll tell you what buff it gives you. It also tells you how many points do you get per minute from them. Now, I can see some city rallies happening. City rallies necessarily is not a good idea in Ark of Osiris. However, when you're winning by a big margin, you can kind of do it for fun. Now, I'm kind of being chased out by enemies. Um, rather than trying to come back home, I think I was standing and fighting, which is a good idea because your marches come back home much faster if they're, if they died and then if they're, um, routed back home. So in Ark of Osiris, that's quite important because you don't really get dead troops. Ideally, you shouldn't really be healing either. So getting a troop dead and then being able to get the marches back on the field faster is a good idea as well. Now, when I mentioned you shouldn't really be healing, why did I say that? Because you can heal. The reason why I say it is you should save your pressure speed ups for actual KVK and things like that rather than fighting in arc because if when you start somewhat running out of troops there is something else you can do which is gather resources from the caravans because that gives you points as well so what i try to do is i try to start with fighting with five marches when my marches are kind of dying if i have only four marches then i'll fight with four and the fifth march i will start gathering resources from the resource points or caravans so i'm just checking some of the 
enemy cities which are in their starting area by the way you can't enter an enemy starting area now the reason why i was checking them is how come they haven't come out um, they should have teleported on this side but then i realized because we took one of their obelisks the number of chances they get to teleport reduces so every 20 minutes you get some teleport um, chances but then if you don't hold the obelisk you don't get them so it's very important to that you do hold on to your obelisks oh actually i have some things to say so on the left side you can see the skills you can see that you need some bar points to uh, you know activate some skills some mm -hmm. need three some need two yep that's a good point and you generally speaking you should only have one skill maybe or two that requires a lot of points as much as they can be better it's generally better to use skills or pick skills that are two points or three points at best because you can use them more frequently and this is especially true for a new starting alliance or an alliance that's just getting used to or hang off arc of osiris yeah and that means you can use your buffs in middle where you can get a lot of points if you get the arc that is exactly correct now what i'm doing on the side is i am actually starting to gather with one march because i think i may be low on troops or i may have just wanted to show you how to do it so you don't bring out just the amount of siege that you need to collect one resource point or one caravan you bring out your full march so that rather than go having to go back home you can hop from caravan to caravan and collect for as long as you can now at this stage of the match everything is red we are swarming enemy cities which is something you can do towards the end of the match so it's actually by the way not just the alliance that's winning that gets the rewards the losing team also gets some rewards yeah, so as long as you got your 10,000 points that you need, you will be able to get 5 gold heads rather than the 10 and um, some of the other rewards such as gems and alliance, uh, alliance credit as well. Now, sometimes if you're in a big alliance, you may not be able to participate in Ark of Osiris as part of the main alliance. This is where um, most kingdoms use their farm alliances where you can kind of do Ark through the farm alliance as well. So that way, more people get to do it, whether it be in the Gold League or the Silver League. Hey, looks like we won. Yep, we did. Now, let's have a quick look at the rewards, if we can. Let's see what we got. So, it looks like we got a lot of gems, commander heads, as we mentioned, and we even got reserves. Mm -hmm. We hope that was comprehensive and helpful. And if it was, then we hope there is a like and subscribe so that you can get more of these contents.